Then Adam and Eve went in search of the guard, and the heat beat like a flame on their faces, and they sweated from the heat and wept before the Lord. But the place where they wept was close to the high mountain, facing the western gate of the garden. Then Adam threw himself down from the top of that mountain. His face was torn and his flesh was flayed, and much blood flowed from him, and he was close to death. Meanwhile Eve remained standing on the mountain, weeping over him, and thus lying. And she said, I wish not to live after him, for all that he did to himself was through me. Then she threw herself after him, and was torn and scorched by stones, and remained lying as dead. But the merciful God who looks upon his creatures looked upon Adam and Eve as they lay dead, and he sent his word unto them and raised, and said to Adam, O Adam, all this misery which you have brought upon yourself will not avail against my rule, neither will it alter the covenant of Phi of fifty-five hundred years. Then Adam said to God, I wither in the heat, I'm faint from walking, and I'm lot of this world, and I know not when you will bring me out of it to rest. Then the Lord God said unto him, O Adam, it cannot be at present, not until you have ended your days. Then shall I bring you out of this wretched land. And Adam said to God, While I was in the garden, I knew neither heat, neither bad feelings moving about, nor trembling, nor fear. But now, since I came to this land, all this affliction has come upon me. Then God said to Adam, So long as you were keeping my commandment, my light and my grace rested on you. But when you did transgress my commandment, sorrow and misery befell you in this land. And Adam wept and said, O Lord, do not cut me off for this, neither smite me with heavy plagues, nor yet repay me according to my sin. For we of our own will did transgress your commandments and forsook your law, and so to become like unto you, when Satan the enemy deceived us. Then God said again unto Adam, Because you have borne fear and trembling in this land, bad feelings, suffering, treading and walking about, going upon this mountain and dying from it, I will take all this upon and save you. Then Adam wept more and said, O God, have mercy on me, so far as to take upon you that which I will do. But God took his words from Adam and Eve. Then Adam and Eve stood on their feet, and Adam said to Eve, Gird yourself 
and I also will gird myself. And she did as Adam told her. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar. And they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilt. But that which had dropped on the sand they took together with the dust where it was mingled and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, Forgive us our trespass and our sin, and look upon us with your eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before you without ceasing. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, nor long discernment nor upright feelings, neither is our bright nature left us. But our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first when we were created. Yet now look upon our blood which is offered upon these stones, and accept it our hands, like the praise we used to sing unto you at first, one in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests unto God. Our Creator, who are in heaven, be gracious to us, O Lord our God. Hallowed be your name, and let the remembrance of you be glorified in heaven above and upon earth here below. Let your kingdom region over us now and forever. The holy men of all said, Remit and forgive unto all men whatsoever they have done unto me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil thing. For you is the kingdom, and you shall region in glory forever and forevermore. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, looked upon Adam and Eve, and upon their blood, which they had held up as an offering unto him, without an order from him for so doing. But he wondered at them, and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire, that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as you have shed your blood, so I will shed. As you shed your blood for forgiveness, through that blood, so also I will forgive and blot out transgressions. Now behold, I have accepted your offering, O Adam, but the days of the covenant where I have bound you are not fulfilled. When they are fulfilled, then will I bring you back into garden. Now therefore strengthen your heart, and when sorrow comes upon you, make me an offering, and I will be favorable to you. But God knew that Adam had in his thoughts that he should often kill himself and make an offering to him of his blood. Therefore did he say unto him, O Adam, do not again kill yourself as you did by throwing yourself down from that mountain.
And Adam said unto God, It was in my mind to put an end to myself at once, for having transgressed your commandments, and for my having come out of the beautiful garden, and for the bright light of which you have deprived me, and for the praises which pour forth from my mouth without ceasing, and for the light that covered me. Yet of your goodness, O God, do not away with me altogether, but be favorable to me every time I die and bring me to life. And thereby it will be made known that you are a merciful God, who do not will that one should perish, who loves not that one should fall, and who does not condemn anyone cruelly, badly, and by whole destruction. Then Adam remained silent. And the word of God came unto him and blessed him, and comforted him, and covenanted with him that he would save him at the end of the days determined upon him. This then was the first offering Adam made unto God, and so it became his custom to do. Then Adam took Eve, and they began to return to the cave of treasures where they dwelt. But when they neared it and saw it from afar, Heavy sorrow fell upon Adam and Eve when they looked at it. Then Adam said to Eve, When we were on the mountain, we were comforted by the word of God that conversed with us. And the light that came from the east shone over us. But now the word of God is hidden from us. And the light that shone over us is so changed as to disappear. And let darkness and sorrow come upon us. And we are forced to enter this cave which is like a prison. Wherein darkness covers us. So that we are parted from each other. And you cannot see me. And neither can I see you. When Adam had said these words, they wept and spread their hands before God, for they were full of sorrow. And they entreated God to bring the sun to them, to shine on them, so the darkness returned not upon them, and they come not again under this covering of rock. And they wished to die rather than see the darkness. Then God looked upon Adam and Eve and upon their great sorrow and upon all they had done with a fervent heart on account of all the trouble they were in instead of their former well-being and on account of all the misery that came upon them in a strange land. Therefore God was not wroth with them, nor impatient with them, but he was long-suffering and forbearing towards them, as towards the children he had created. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, Adam, as for the son, if I were to take it and bring it to you, Day, hours, years, and months would all come to nothing, and the covenant I have made with you would never be fulfilled. But you should have then turned and left in a long plague, and no salvation would be left to you forever. Ye are rather bear long and calm your soul while you abide this night and day until the fulfillment of the days. And the time of my covenant is come. Then shall I come and save you, O Adam, 
for I do not wish that you be afflicted. And when I look at all the good things in which you didst live, and why you came out of them, then would I willingly show you mercy. But I cannot alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth, else would I have brought you back into the garden. When, however, the covenant is fulfilled, then shall I show you and you seed mercy and bring you into a land of gladness where there is neither sorrow nor suffering, but abiding joy and gladness and light that never fails and praises that never cease, and a beautiful garden that shall never pass away. And God said again unto Adam, Be long-suffering and enter the cave, for the darkness of which you are afraid shall only be twelve hours long. And when it ends, light shall arise. Then when Adam heard these words from God, he and Eve worshipped before him, and their hearts were comforted. They returned into the cave after their custom, while tears flowed from their eyes. Sorrow and wailing came from their hearts, and they wished their soul would leave their body. And Adam and Eve stood praying until the darkness of night came upon them. And Adam was hid from Eve and she from him. And they remained standing in prayer. When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer and how God communed with them and comforted them and how he had accepted their offering, Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his hosts. In his hands was a flashing fire and they were in a great light. He then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave because he could not enter into by reason of their prayers. And he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve while his hosts began to sing praises. And Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think with himself that it was heavenly light, and that Satan's hosts were angels, and that God had sent them to watch at the cave and to give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam comes out of the cave and saw them, and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam thereby in such way and the second time humble him before God. But when therefore Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light and at those many songs of praise, and at that host standing outside that did not come into us. Do not tell us what they say, or whence they come, or what is the meaning of this light, what those praises are, wherefore they have been sent hither and why they do not come in. If they were from God, they would come to us in the cave and would tell us their errand. 
Then Adam stood up and prayed unto God with a fervent heart and said, O Lord, is there in the world another God than you who created angels and filled them with light and sent them to keep us who would come with them? But we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are in great light. They sing loud praises. If they are of some other God, then you tell me, and if they are sent by you, inform me of the reason for which you have sent them. No sooner had Adam said this, that an angel from God appeared unto him in the cave, who said to him, O Adam, fear not, that is Satan and his hosts. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in a serpent. But this time he is come to you in the similitude of an angel of light. In order that when you worship him, he might entrail you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave and stripped him of the faint he had assumed and brought him in his own hideous form to Adam and Eve, who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, This hideous form has been his ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in this. Therefore did he transform himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his hosts from Adam and Eve and said to them, Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel went from them. But Adam and Eve remained standing in the cave. No consolation came to them. They were divided in their thoughts. And when it was morning, they prayed, and then went out to seek the garden, for their hearts were towards it, and they could get no consolation for having left it. But when the sly Satan saw them, that were going to the garden, he gathered together his hosts and came in appearance upon a cloud, intent on deceiving them. But when Adam and Eve saw him thus in a vision, they thought they were angels of God come to comfort them about their having left the garden, or to bring them back again into it. And Adam spread his hands unto God, beseeching him to make him understand what they were. Then Satan, the hater of all good, said to Adam, O Adam, I am an angel of the great God, and behold the hosts that surround me. God has sent me and them to make you and bring you to the border of the garden northwards to the shore of the clear sea, and bat you and Eve in it, and raise you to your former gladness. Then you return again to the garden. These words sank into the heart of Adam and Eve. Yet God withheld his word from Adam, and did not make him understand at once, but waited to see his strength whether he would be overcome as he was as Eve was when in the garden, or whether he would prevail. Then Satan called to Adam and Eve and said, Behold, we go to the sea of water, and they begin to go. And Adam and Eve followed them at some little distance. But when they came to the mountain to the north of the garden, a very high mountain without any steps to the top of it, 
the devil drew near to Adam and Eve and made them go up to the top in reality and not in vision, wishing as he did to throw them down and kill them and to wipe off their name from the earth so that this earth should remain to him and his hosts alone. But when the merciful God saw that Satan wished to kill Adam with his manifold devices, and saw that Adam was meek and without cunningness, God spake to Adam in a loud voice. Correction. God spake to Satan in a loud voice and cursed him. Then he and his hosts fled, and Adam and Eve remained standing on the top of the mountain, once they saw below them the wide world, high above which they were. But they saw none of the hosts which were by them. They wept, both Adam and Eve, before God, and begged for forgiveness of him. Then came the word from God to Adam and said to him, Know you and understand concerning this Satan, that he seeks to deceive you and your seed after you. And Adam wept before the Lord God and begged and entreated him to give him something from the garden as a token to him, wherein to be comforted. And God looked upon Adam's thought and sent the angel Michael as far as the sea that reaches to India to take from their golden rods and bring them to Adam. This did God in his wisdom in order that these golden rods being with Adam in the cave should shine forth with light in the night around him and put an end to his fear of darkness. Then the angel Michael went down by God's order, took golden rods as God had commanded him and brought them. After these things, God commanded the angel Gabriel to go down to the garden and say to the cherub who, went, who kept it, Behold, God has commanded me to come into the garden and to take from their sweet-smelling incense and give it to Adam. Then the angel Gabriel went down by God's order to the garden and told the cherub as God had commanded him. The cherub then said, Well, and Gabriel went in and took the incense. Then God commanded his angel Raphael to go down to the garden and speak to the cherub about some merch to give to Adam. And the angel Raphael went down and told the cherub as God had commanded him. And the cherub said, Well. Then Raphael went in and took the mirth. The golden rods were from the Indian Sea, where they are precious stones. The incense was from the eastern border of the garden, and the myrrh from the western border, whence bitterness came upon Adam. And the angels brought these three things to God by the tree of life in the garden. Then God said to the angels, Dip them in the spring of water, then take them and sprinkle their water over Adam and Eve, that they be a little comforted in their sorrow, and give them to Adam and Eve. And the angels did as God had commanded them, and they gave all those things to Adam and Eve on the top of the mountain upon which Satan had placed, when he sought to make an end of them. And when Adam saw the golden rods, the incense and the mirror, he was rejoiced 
and wept because he thought that the gold was a token of the kingdom whence he had come, and the incense was a token of the bright light which had been taken from him, and the demurch was a token of the sorrow in which he was. After these things God said to Adam, You did ask of me something from the garden to be comforted wherewith, and I have given you these three tokens as a consolation to you, that you trust in me and in my covenant with you. O Adam, put these by you in the cave, the gold that it may shed light over you by night, the incense that you smell its sweet savor, and the myrrh to comfort you in your sorrow. When Adam heard these words from God, he worshipped before him. He and Eve worshipped him and gave him thanks because he had dealt mercifully with them. Then God commanded the three angels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, each to bring what he had brought and give it to Adam. And they did so one by one. And God commanded Suriel and Salatiel to bear up Adam and Eve and bring them down from the top of the high mountain and to take them to the cave of treasures. There they lay the gold on the south side of the cave, the incense on the eastern side, and the myrrh on the western side, for the mouth of the cave was on the north side. The angels then comforted Adam and Eve and departed. The gold was seventy rods, the incense twelve pounds, and the myrrh three pounds. These remained by Adam in the house of treasures, therefore was it called a concealment. But other interpreters say it was called the cave of treasures, by reason of the bodies of righteous men that were in it. These three things did God give to Adam on the third day after he had come out of garden, in token of the three days the Lord. And these three things, as they continued with Adam in the cave, gave him light by night, and by day they gave him a little relief from his sorrow. And Adam and Eve remained in the cave of treasures until the seventh day. They neither ate of the fruit of the earth, nor drank water. And when it dawned on the eighth day, Adam said to Eve, O Eve, we pray God to give us something from the garden, and he sent his angels who brought us what we had desired. But now rise, let us go to the sea of water we saw at first, and let us stand in it, praying that God will again be favorable to us and take us back to the garden, or give us something, or that he will give us comfort in some other land than this in which we are. Then Adam and Eve came out of the cave, went and stood on the border of the sea in which they had before thrown themselves. And Adam said to Eve, Come and go down into this place, and come not out of it until the end of the thirty days, when I shall come to you, and pray to God with fervent heart and a sweet voice to forgive us. And I will go to another place, and go down into it, and do like you. Then Eve went down into the water as Adam had commanded her. Adam also went down into the water, and they stood praying and besought the Lord to forgive them their offense and to restore them 
to their former state. And they stood like this praying unto the end of the 30 days. But Satan, the hater of all good, saw them in the cave, but found them not, although he searched diligently for them. But he found them standing in the water, praying, and thought with himself, Adam and Eve are too standing in that water, beseeching God to forgive them their transgression, and to restore them to their former state and to take them from under my hands. But I will deceive them so that they shall come out of the water and not fulfill their vow. Then the hearer of all good went not to Adam, but went to Eve and took the form of an angel of God, praising and rejoicing, and said to her, Peace be unto you. Be glad and rejoice. God is favorable unto you. And he sent me to Adam. I have brought him the glad tidings of salvation and of his being filled with bright light as he was at first. And Adam in his joy for his restoration has sent me to you, that you come to me in order that I crown you with light like him. And he said to me, Speak to Eve. If she does not come with you, tell her of the sign when we were on the top of the mountain, how God sent his angels who took us and brought us to the cave of treasures and laid the gold on the southern side incense on the eastern side and myrrh on the western side now come to him when eve heard these words from him she rejoiced great and thinking the satan's appearance was real she came out of the sea he went before and she followed him until they came to adam then Satan hid himself from her, and she saw him no more. She then came and stood before Adam, who was standing by the water and rejoicing in God's forgiveness. And as she called to him, he turned round, found her there, and wept when he saw her, and smote upon his breast. And from the bitterness of his grief, he sunk into the water. But God looked upon him and upon his misery, and upon his being about to breathe his last. And the word of God came from heaven, raised him out of the water, and said to him, Go up the high bank to Eve, and when he came up to Eve, he said to her, Who said you to come hither? Then she told him the discourse of the angel who had appeared to her and had given her a sign. But Adam grieved and gave her to know it was Satan. He then took her, and they both returned to the cave. These things happened to them the second time they went down to the water, seven days after their coming out of the garden. They fasted in the water thirty days, altogether forty-two days since they had left the garden. On the morning of the forty-third day, they came out of the cave, sorrowful and weeping, their bodies were lean, and they were parched from hunger and thirst, from fasting and praying, and from their heavy sorrow on account of their transgression. And when they had come out of the cave, they went up the mountain to the west of the garden. 
There they stood and prayed and besought God to grant them forgiveness of their sins. And after their prayers, Adam began to entreat God, saying, O my Lord, my God, and my Creator, you did command the four elements to be gathered together, and they were gathered together by your order. Then you spread your hand and did create me out of one element, that of the dust of the earth. And you did bring me into the garden at the third hour on a Friday and did inform me of it in the cave. Then at first I knew neither night nor day, for I had a bright nature. Neither did the light in which I lived ever leave me to know night or day. Then again, O oh Lord, in that third hour in which you created me, you brought me all animals, lions and ostriches and foals of the air, all things that move in the earth, which you had created at the first hour before me of the Friday. And your will was that I should name them all, one by one, with a suitable name. And you gave me understanding and knowledge and a pure heart and a right mind from you that I should name them after your own mind regarding the naming of them. O oh God, you made them obedient to me and you did order that not one of them break from my sway according to your commandments and to the dominion which you have given me over them. But now they are all estranged from me. Then it was in that third hour of Friday in which you did create me and did command me concerning the tree, to which I was neither to draw near nor to eat thereof. For you said to me in the garden, when you eatest of it, of that you shall die. And if you had punished me, as you said, with death, I should have died that very moment. Moreover, when you commanded me regarding the tree, I was neither to approach nor to come close. Evil was not with me. You had not yet created her. Neither had you yet taken her out of my sight nor had she yet heard this order from you. Then at the end of the third hour of that Friday, O Lord, you did cause a slumber and sleep to come over me, and I slept and was overwhelmed in sleep. Then you did draw a rib out of my side and created it after my own similitude and image. Then I awoke, when I saw her and knew who she was, I said, This is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Henceforth she, sh she shall be called a woman. It was of your good will, O God, that you broughtest a slumber and sleep over me, and that you did forthwith bring Eve out of my sight until she was out so that I did not see how she was made neither could I witness O oh my Lord how awful and great are your goodness and glory and of your good will O oh Lord you made us both with bodies of a bright nature and you made us two one and you gave us your grace, and you did fill us with praises of the Holy Spirit, that we should be neither hungry nor thirsty, nor know what sorrow is, nor yet faintness of heart, neither suffering, fasting, nor weariness. But now, O oh God, since we transgressed your commandment and broke your law, 
you have brought us out into a strange land and has caused suffering and faintness, hunger and thirst to come upon us. Now therefore, O God, we pray to you to give us something to eat from the garden, to satisfy our hunger with it, and something wherewith to quench our thirst. For behold, many days, O God, we have not tasted anything, and drink nothing, and our flesh is dried up, and our strength is wasted, and our sleep is gone from our eyes, from faintness and weeping. Then, O oh God, we dare not gather out of the fruit of trees from fear of you. For when we transgressed at first, you did spare us, and you did not make us die. But now we thought in our hearts, if we eat of the fruit of trees without God's order, he will destroy us this time and will wipe us off from the face of the earth. And if we drink of this water without God's order, he will make an end of us and root us up at once. Now, therefore, O God, the time come to this place with Eve. We beg you will give us of the fruit of the garden that we may be satisfied with it. For we desire the fruit that is on the earth and all else that we lack in it. Then God looked again upon Adam in his weeping and groaning, and the word of God came to him and said to him, O Adam, when you were in my garden, you did not know neither eating nor drinking, neither faintness nor suffering, neither leanness of flesh nor change, neither did sleep depart from your eyes. But since you transgressed and came into this strange land, all these trials are come upon you. Then God commanded the cherub who kept the gate of the garden with a sword of fire in his hand to take some of the fruit of the fig tree and to give it to Adam. The cherub obeyed the command of the Lord God and went into the garden and brought two figs on two twigs, each fig hanging to its leaf. They were from two of the trees among which Adam and Eve hid themselves when God went to walk in the garden. And the word of God came to Adam and Eve and said to them, Adam, Adam, where are you? And Adam answered, O oh God, here I am. When I heard the sound of you and your voice, I hid myself because I'm naked. Then the cherub took two figs and brought them to Adam and Eve. But he threw them to them from afar, for they might not come near the cherub by reason of their flesh that could not come near the fire. At first angels trembled at the presence of Adam and were afraid of him. But now Adam trembled before the angels and was afraid of them. Then Adam drew near and took one fig and Eve also came in turn and took the other. And as they took them up in their hands, they looked at them and knew they were from the trees among which they had hidden from themselves. 